Egyptian-Canadian journalist Mohamed Fahmy has made international headlines since 2013. While working in Egypt as bureau chief for Al Jazeera English, he was falsely accused of terrorism and served 438 days in prison. Since his arrest, Fahmy has become a symbol for freedom of the press. Now free and back in Canada, Mohamed Fahmy visits Humber College to share his story with faculty and students. So the last story I reported before I got arrested on December 24th, 2013, I reported for half an hour at three in the morning the designation of the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist group. Three days later, in a very dramatic scene, I get a knock on the door in the Marriott Hotel where we were working as a makeshift office. I look at the hole and it's the old waiter trick, you know, carrying the tray. So I open the door and suddenly do a dozen officers barge in and one of them is rolling a video camera, and the other guy is snapping photographs, and unbelievably, before we even reached the police station, we were portrayed as terrorists, right there and then. Fami says his freedom came thanks to his family, a great legal team, a good PR strategy, and an unprecedented public support. Social media um, just went uh, berserk. It was, we're, we're talking about 700 million impressions in one month. We're talking about 141 million participants on the Free AJ staff campaign. In prison, for me, in solitary confinement for one month, I felt, I knew a little bit of what was happening. Snippets were sort of slipping through the grapevine of the prison. I knew there were people fighting in Canada and abroad, and it was, it was just very clear that this just wasn't about me anymore. It was about freedom of speech. Fami says he was disappointed with his former employer, Al Jazeera, and the former Harper government. Both parties, he felt, had neglected the fight against his unjust and politically motivated imprisonment. And I'm very lucky, I believe, that I came into Canada during this new era of change. And I was so excited to meet, to meet Mr. Trudeau right before the elections and Mr. Mulcair because they, they were calling my family. They were speaking to my lawyers. They were engaged and know the nitty-gritty details of my case. At the moment, I am working with Amnesty International and my lawyers, and we're presenting a charter of recommendations to Mr. Trudeau and his new government very soon that again has suggestions of how to deal with situations like that because there are still many Canadians behind bars. After Fami concluded his speech, members of the audience were invited to participate in a Q&A. Um, so I'm just wondering when you think ahead to your organization and fighting for that, what do you see the responsibility of networks who rely on freelancers and fixers to get the job and coverage done? So the freelancers, I say, you know, you got to take it very seriously. And fixers, some, you know, they, they are very valuable people. You know, it, it's becoming incredibly dangerous. We don't have a neutral ground anywhere to go as journalists. We're being targeted by governments who want to put us in prison, and we're being targeted by extremists who want to behead journalists. The highlight of the event came after his speech when Humber Journalism students took part in a round table discussion. What do you think is the best way to fight the apathy of people in countries like Canada or in the West about a situation like yours where they might have heard of your name and they might have seen something in the news but they don't know anything about you. Mm -hmm. They don't, and more importantly, they don't really care or they're just indifferent. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's it's not even about me anymore. It's uh, my situation just uh, puts a spotlight on the, on the main problem that's becoming an epidemic uh, in the whole world right now. And when you, when you put a face to a specific problem or you humanize a specific problem, um, people start to listen. And I come now and my freedom comes with a responsibility and a platform. I mean, you, you said you just went to Carleton. Obviously, Humber has a huge journalism program. Um, but there's a lot of people gathered, even just around the, the ramp today, that aren't necessarily in the journalism program. Why does this story matter to people that aren't journalists or aren't part of the government? Um, why does your story matter to them? Oh, man, the story has, it's a human story um, before anything else. It's about three silenced journalists and what they represent 
you know, in, in the, case, the case as well, it has aspects of press freedoms, geopolitics, identity, new laws that were created just for this case. What responsibility organizations have to protect the people that they're purchasing photos and stories from? Mm. This is a topic that is very, very uh, important for me. And it, uh, if a country is telling you that these guys are terrorists, and you as a network, is, you're not convinced of that. And you go and you purchase material from this, these, these, these people, um, citizen journalists, uh, they, you, you will be under scrutiny and you will face prosecution. I believe it's the responsibility of the network before it's the responsibility of the citizen journalist in this case. But again, it's the governments who are making the life of journalism for journalists so hard that networks are not able to enter specific areas in Syria, in Libya, in many places to get the story. So what do we do? Live in a black spot? So then they're, they're reverting to using footage from uh, citizens. He told the room of students that no matter how cautious you are, there are always risks when reporting in war-stricken areas. You know, when, when you reach that point as a journalist and you think three or four times before you press that publishing button, this is when uh, you know you're, you're in danger. And this is what I started to feel in many countries where I was going. Am I stepping on this minister's feet? Am I going to get this knock on my door? And eventually it came. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, 47 journalists have been killed this year alone, and more than 200 remain behind bars worldwide. FAMI will continue his advocacy for freedom of the press with the FAMI Foundation website that was launched last week. Be sure to visit jsource.ca and follow us at jsource.irb. For the International Reporting Bureau at Humber College, I'm Katie Peterson.